I've only seen, yeah, I've only seen two colors of the uh, 570S. I've seen a new color called Blade Silver, and I've seen Ventura Orange. I've seen little samples of uh, oh, the was on the show. Yeah, the New York yeah, Blade Silver, the New York. Okay. Yeah, and it's in Tampa right now. It was in Miami last week. Is this from the auto show as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the first uh, we used, we had a, before the auto show, we had many, many private reveals. You know, where we would have. Uh, previous owners and uh, the Japanese uh, lottery uh, and then we'd be able to cover back five, six times a day, every day for a week. And then we went to the auto show and then there was the world. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and we we had two uh, orange ones, uh, Ventura orange ones, all up there once. Yeah. Sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of, this down. This part is going to be showing MP412C, which you were mentioning, right. um, and the 650S, awesome examples of super serious cars, but um, we needed to figure out how to make it, that McLaren charm and that McLaren engineering work its way down into a, a more attainable segment. So now, in the sport series, it, so you were looking at a 911 Turbo S, it's a really yes. great sports car, and you know, the, the R8 is another vehicle in that segment, the V12 Vantage S from Aston Martin, they're all great cars, and they've all had some, some great success over the last decade or so. And they've got a look that has stood the test of time, and that's pretty exciting. But we wanted to kind of disrupt that a little bit, and hopefully 570S is, uh, you'll agree, something which uh, definitely takes that to heart. At its core are, are a lot of uh, fundamental racing technologies, which I'll get into, but I want to start with the shell of the vehicle since we're up front. I like to kind of start where the wind starts and uh, take a look at even just the nose of the vehicle, if you're looking at whether you know McLarens or you're newer to the brand, one of the things that differentiates 570S is the definitive nature with which it treats the air. So rather than being a gradual surface that's uh, just generally sleek and aerodynamic, we're making decisions with how this air is going to be moved. And that is really apparent when you take a look at this vertical line here. That's going to separate the air into quadrants. You're going to have uh, you know, one quadrant moving upward and over. The aerodynamics are pretty obvious. We'll get into some of the complexities towards the back. But Pretty straightforward from here. The splitters and, and under the vehicle are moving to a smooth undercarriage, so you have a nice, even set of surfaces between the road and the bottom of the car. And because the splitters and the intake here are smaller than what you'll have when you see those large diffusers in the back, you create quite a bit of downforce, keeping that turbulence low. 
uh, set that bit in the air. But the most interesting bit for me is how air moves off to the side. So you see these extended arrow blades on 570S, quite pronounced. And uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, you're, you're absent the mesh, which really, um, traditionally, especially when you're done, if you take a look at P1 from the front, or particularly uh, 650S from the front, you see that mesh. It really brings sort of a mechanical aesthetic, and that's gone. Uh, Frank Stephenson, who's our lead designer, and Robert Melvin, who led this, this particular project, really wanted to bring that kind of organic look, that biomimicry, taking bits from nature, and integrating that into the aesthetic, as you really uh, are taken into that with these smooth lines and, and the absence of hard patterns. I like quite a bit. So the air moves into this front intake. That's a low temperature radiator. It's there to cool the uh, transmission and to keep air cool for uh, usage further back. So I'll show you kind of what happens as the air moves. Take a look here. We've got uh, the air passing through uh, the back of the wheels here. And you're going to cool those carbon ceramic brakes. Carbon ceramic brakes are standard in 570S, which is pretty great for this class. They'll stop the vehicle from 60 to 100 about 106 feet. So very, very good stopping time. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that uh, on top of the fact that the brakes are very good, but it's a six piston in front, four piston in the rear. For those who uh, would prefer, it's a no cost option to go to iron brakes uh, as well. And of course, the air is gonna pass through the, over, the, over the brakes here and then enter the side channel. So the first step, yeah, for the side channel, the most obvious is that there's a turning vane bringing most of the air into a hot, uh, high temperature intake. That's going to keep the engine cool. We'll talk a bit about the engine in a minute, but uh, this kind of throws a lot of folks for a loop. What is the deal with this? It's called the door tender. Um, when we expanded the space inside the vehicle, so after all, it's a sports series vehicle. This is the kind of car people are going to drive every day. A lot of people are going to look at this car as this is going to be my one big luxury treat to myself, or you know, it's, it's less likely to be one of 70 cars in a huge hangar someplace. This is going to get that daily use. So we wanted to make sure it was designed around not just the driver, but the everyday driver to a greater extent. So we expanded the inside of the vehicle. That means we got a bit more of a, a bulge here to the roof line than we've had before. And, uh, and we did some work back here with the, the first concave uh, rear window we've seen in a, in a McLaren. However, that created some lift, and uh, subsequently that vacuum from the lift created some turbulence, and we needed to figure out a way around that. So this door tendon does an awesome job of creating a, a pressure zone here, making the air move quite a bit faster, and uh, it'll, it'll either move the, that air down and through the uh, high temperature intake or over this rear haunch and through the flying buttress. This creates almost 20 pounds of downforce at speed, uh, negates the lift problems here. This extra velocity for the, the wind and the stream of air moving over the top negates any turbulence and really makes a nice smooth airflow. Of course, you've got that down pressure over these rear haunches. You get a sense for the fact that this is a floating panel with this lip right here. It really tells you there's air moving uh, above and beneath this panel, which is great. And then if you go to the swing, the which has been used to cool those radiators, which is great. And then the air which went over those flying buttresses moves over the mesh. This is the only exposed engine bay in this class as well. So uh, there are some class leading features, but everything is here for a reason. And, you know, this is a shrink wrapping for the engineering. It's not uh, a fashion car. There are a lot of really beautiful cars, which I love dearly from a you know, lifetime of admiring designers' uh, aspirations realized. Uh, however, this is uh, more so a representation of an engineer's <laughs> and desire to realize and packaged well. You see a lot of carbon fiber on this particular 570S example. However, uh, from an exterior standpoint, just about anywhere you see carbon fiber would typically be either this palladium color here, uh, which the differs black. a little bit. It's very close to a, a, a very light black or a dark gray um, color on a varying materials. It might be on polymer, it might be on aluminum. Typically the body panels on 570S will be aluminum. Even this complex rear assembly uh, is aluminum by default. Uh, what I like about it is it's a very complex shape. A couple years ago, a few years ago, this was impossible to do with aluminum, but we use a, a technology called superforming where we take the metal and heat it and then apply it to the molds. Um, so I think the aluminum is especially impressive. Carbon fiber is a an outstanding material uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, though we already know you can do anything with it. So to see this in aluminum is kind of cool. So that's the shell of the vehicle. We'll talk about what's just beneath the surface. That's where McLaren starts to uh, differentiate itself further. So at its core, and you may have noticed the rolling chassis over there. Um, not that rolling chassis, that's a stroller. That's a very good thing. This rolling <laughs> chassis on the right, is uh, it, that's, that's the core of the vehicle. It's a carbon fiber monocell. So if you're familiar with F1, every F1 vehicle, because of McLaren, is, uh, is made of carbon fiber. It's seven times stronger than metal. It's much, much lighter. Um, unlike other vehicles made with, uh, with aluminum 
chassis, which is in this class every single competitor. Uh, you're not going to get squeaks and squawks and rattles uh, uh, out of that uh, and on top of that because it's so much stronger. It's orders of magnitude safer uh, and has a, a, some other pretty incredible torsional rigidity uh, properties which, uh, which make it stand out in the class. And there are front and rear aluminum sub-assemblies. Um, if we have some time at a one on one, we can take a look at that rolling chassis over there. Though it's from an older model, uh, there are some commonalities with how the engine's mounted, which uh, have some distinct advantages in terms of noise and vibration that are pretty cool. Uh, so, at its core, we're using materials uh, which are race inspired that allow us to build a lighter, more nimble, and stronger vehicle. Uh, how that translates when you're looking at weight, uh, I like to talk about power to weight ratio. In this class, it has the best power to weight ratio of any vehicle, uh, 428 brake horsepower per ton. So very, very, very powerful. The, the power part for me is the, even more fun than the uh, weight part. So we can get right down to that. This is a, a twin turbo V8. It's called the M838T. Uh, it's 3.8 liters. It's, um, it's, this is the M838TE, an evolution on what you might have seen in uh, 650S. A lot of folks say, oh, it's, it's that same engine. It's not. It's actually 30% unique. So it has a completely bespoke exhaust manifold. Uh, so you're going to have a unique engine or exhaust note here. Um, it has new uh, turbo charging mechanism, uh, camshift uh, timers. Uh, we have uh, new ejectors, quite a few new features. There's a new uh, Bosch 9 controller on board, which uh, can pull about 90% more often. So we're able to use algorithms to help the seven speed dual clutch transmission to shift even smoother and even faster than ever before. So uh, if you're, whether you're driving it uh, down to the supermarket or to a restaurant, or you're taking it out on the track, you're going to get more performance out of uh, the same seven-speed uh, seamless shift gearbox we have before. So, how that translates to the road? Of course, you know if you have a great part of weight ratio, it's going to be very, very nimble. Uh, we've got a race-inspired double wishbone uh, suspension with adaptive dampers. Uh, that's going to give you a, a lot of the versatility you need. There are anti-roll bars in the front and rear, which have necessitated some modifications, pretty substantial modifications to the front and rear subframe. Um, and when you take the tires to the road, that results in a 3.1 second 0 to 60. That's very good in this class, but the 0 to 100 is where we really shine, being that this is a, a McLaren. Uh, those higher speeds are, are where uh, we can kind of start taking the cake a, a little bit more readily, and that's uh, putting us ahead of all of the competitors by half a second with a 6.3 second 0 to 100. Now that's actually the same performance figure we got from the F1. So, uh, pretty amazing. The F1, is a, most of you probably know, is still the fastest naturally aspirated production vehicle available. So, uh, pretty amazing figures, I think they're astounding. We've got a top speed uh, over 200 miles an hour, it's 204 for a top speed. And uh, miraculously, it's engineered so well uh, that uh, they're able to get about 25 miles per gallon out of this. We'll get those official EPA figures, but that's what we're working with right now. Maybe at the pump, if you're looking at a you know $200,000 car, maybe those counting those pennies isn't something everyone's doing, but they are counting how often you're sitting there holding the pump. And uh, so often, you know, in, in vehicles which perform like this, you have a lot of work. It's a lot of work to drive them, and it's a lot of work to go to the gas station every you know 200 miles because there's a 19 gallon aluminum twin pump tank here. You're looking at at least 450 miles uh, under normal conditions between Phillips. So from a convenience standpoint, this is the kind of vehicle you don't have to stop often. And you can take those long trips, even though this is obviously a sports car, uh, it does have more storage space than all of its competitors. I can't open the front because this is a pre-production model and not everything is ready for prime time. Uh, however, um, later in the, in the year you'll be able to stop back when we have another model that uh, is ready for you to see that. But it definitely has uh, more space than its competitors. So I have a store as a collection piece. Uh, we worked hard with a few significant re-engineering bits. The McLaren's uh, famous hallmark here, these dihedral doors, which have been present in all the McLaren's to date, uh, have been redesigned so they open farther out. And they up a little higher so you have a better position for ingress and egress, and then the sills here in the carbon fiber monocell, for the first time we have a, a new revision of the monocell called monocell 2, much lower, much easier to get in and out of. We worked hard to uh, create something that's customizable, something that you, you know, there are a couple different, three different significant leather packages, there's an Alcantara package, so there's a sport package right now which you're seeing an example of, and there's also a luxury package, so if you want the car to stand out like this one does with this carbon fiber and the Ventura orange and be very bright and say, to everyone, I am a McLaren and I am very fast. <laughs> this certainly does the trick. However, if you go with a, a more closed wheel uh, option and, a, and an earthy tone and, and then the leather seats, which are far less um, intricate, far less um, high contrast, you're going to be looking at, at you know larger 
panels of, of leather and a more plush interior. It takes on a very different aesthetic, especially when you see the same body color roof as you see with the rest of the paint. It, it looks a lot more squat and a lot more, in my opinion, a lot more sensual. You know, so it's just a bit more supple uh, when you when you take a look at it with uh, without all this contrast. So it's got that versatile aesthetic, and when you get inside, uh, you can you can tell already it just looks like a comfortable place to be. They've worked hard to make it easy to get in and, and improve the driving position. The uh, eight pillars have been modified, they're smaller, they're moved out farther, so you have more width on the steering wheel and, or on the windshield, and also um, more height as well. We've uh, brought that down quite a bit, which is why you see two windshield wipers as opposed to one. It's not an Americanization, it's just now the proportions don't work for a radial uh, uh, method of removing the, the rain. So that's kind of it. You have a lot of the features you'd expect from you know an executive sedan. you got optional heated seats and heated uh, uh, electric seats, electric steering wheel as well, um, automatic windshield wipers. The sound system has been upgraded. The bass system is a McLaren 8 speaker. We've teamed up with Bowers and Wilkins for a uh, 12 speaker, 1,280 watt surround system, which is pretty great. So if you're looking at this volume of space, that's a, that's a lot of sound. Um, so you're working hard to really give it that versatility and probably the place where McLaren shines in terms of drivability, uh, you know, far above uh, most of the vehicles in this class, especially, uh, and even in the Super and the Ultimate series, what what differentiates us is that we've got uh, that little panel down there in between the seats called the Adaptive Dynamics panel that allows you to set either the suspension or and or the uh, powertrain dynamics to be oriented towards normal driving, sport driving, or track driving. Uh, so if you want to have that, that cushy, comfortable feeling going to the supermarket and not getting a ton of feedback from the road, normal is a great option because it's going to just be outstanding. Like I said, you get that executive car feel, but if you go down to sport or track, you're going to get increasing levels of information from the road and, and uh, stiffness and rigidity that you need in order to command the vehicle at higher speeds. The same is true for the, the drivetrain. If you decide to go into sport or track mode with the drivetrain, you're going to have much more aggressive shifts if you leave it in automatic. Uh, mode and then if you decide to take over you'll find a much more responsive across the board. Of course it's got electro hydraulic steering so rather than going fly by wire like a lot of competitors have done we want to preserve that sense of feedback to the wheel at all times. Uh, so it's, a, it's got all of the dynamics variants that you can expect and then of course launch control, winter mode you can uh, adjust the electronic stability control to your liking or in certain modes completely disable it which is outstanding to kind of have the vehicle be there as your training wheels and as your uh, environment changes or as your level of um, interest in, in aggressive performance driving uh, improves you can you can kind of tame down those features if you like. Um,